Well, the U.S. dollar was driven to five-week highs to end the trading week, with the Aussie dollar getting hammered on Friday. Let's get us across the detail. Lachlan Meekin is joining us from Go Markets. Lachlan, welcome to the program. Look, the U.S. dollar strength has been, you know, a really instructive uh, story being painted about where uh, where confidence is going about this. I think one of my previous guests called it, you know, U.S. dollar exceptionalism. Uh, where to yeah. from here? Yeah, it, was, it really was a return of King Dollar last week, wasn't it? Um, the, oh, we had this the narrative of this Fed pivot, which I guess last week we saw the D pivot as, as some of the Fed governors pushed back on that um, peak dollar, peak rates kind of uh, a narrative that was going around. Now, the US dollar, I'm expecting to stay well bid. I mean, I've been saying this for a while to, to our clients. The, the fundamentals really just support it. We've got um, the, the main thing's been the Fed. We've got a, at least one and a quarter, 125 basis points of, of hikes left this year, maybe more. Um, that'll bring it up to a fairly high rate for the, the preeminent um, currency of the world. So they're very attractive to investors. Uh, the FOMC minutes are very interesting. They were originally seen as dovish, but that didn't last long when um, you know, people looked into them a bit more. We had the comments about a strong dollar being good for bringing their inflation down. Uh, there was no mention of it being a drag on any other part of the economy. So all in all, the Fed doesn't seem unhappy with a strong dollar. Um, also, energy is a problem for the competitors. You look at Europe, these energy dependent um, importers, Europe, uh, Japan, um, these prices they're paying is, is going to affect their terms of trade. You're going to see fair value uh, by any kind of metric kind of come down for those currencies, also supporting the dollar. Um, and the 10 year yields too, I mean, watching those, they're, they're kind of creeping back up to that uh, 3%, which that differential in the the ten year T note and the ten year JGB, especially the Japanese one, is um been a big driver of the dollar yen. So uh, you'd be brave to be shorting that at the moment. It's looking like it may go back up and try and test that one forty level again. Aussie Lachlan being impacted by what's going on with King Dollar, but is the selling pressure on the Aussie also an expression of real concerns over global growth? We've got China still dealing with COVID and having COVID outbreaks also dealing with drought and energy shortages. I mean, it, it certainly isn't a real favorable picture being painted for the Aussie. No, 100%, you're 100% right there. It's um, the risk sentiment's a very big driver of the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar, which is why both of them got hammered uh, last week. But um, some of the headwinds on the Aussie, I mean, we did see it pop above that 70 cents that we spoke about last time briefly on the, uh, the, the Fed pivot narrative, but the D pivot obviously pushed it straight back under. Um, China's slowing down. I mean, iron ore prices I've seen have come down a fair bit. Um, and there's also the headwind of the expectation that the RBA is going to be hiking. I think the future's pricing in 130 basis points by the end of the year. So they've got a fair bit of work to do just to keep up with what the market's expecting. So there's more likely going to disappoint to the downside, if anything. Um, and yeah, I mean, with, with that, we are at a level now. We've, we've kind of sat at a, a pretty important support level that we saw, I think, May, June at test and bounce off. Um, but getting it back above 70 the way things are with this risk off sentiment, and we've seen the, obviously the equity markets gap down again this morning. So I think it's going to be a, a pretty tough ride for the Aussie getting any higher than 70. I would expect it to range from 70 down to 67 in the next couple of months, and at least anyway. A lot will depend obviously later this week with how the US dollar goes, but um, I'm thinking the US dollar is just going to get stronger with the PCA and the Jackson Hole, to be honest. Yeah, it's so you've sort of spoken your view on Jackson Hole then and what kind of commentary we're going to get from Jerome Powell. What about the PCE deflator? Because that's one of the big three that's coming this week. Yeah, you think it's going to show that maybe that's peaked inflation for now. But I mean, even if it's peaked, it's got a long way to go to get down to their target. So it's not going to stop the Fed being fairly aggressive, I think. Um, and I think your previous guest mentioned the the pickle the ECB's in trying to to hike rates, whereas the Fed's in a, a much easier position with a, a stronger ec economy to to hike into. They're not hiking into um, what's looking like a recession, the EU and the UK as well. So um, I, I expect them to to keep going and, and be quite aggressive. And if you've seen that in the tone of um, the Fed governors that have spoken recently, they've pushed back against that. Um, Fed pivot narrative, which has, has been a real big uh, driver of the US dollar strength as well, I think. Yeah, and we've got uh, quite a few PMIs due um, right around the globe, of course, but in Europe as well. I mean, you've got to think that those are going to be an expression of, you know, energy costs and input costs yeah. and uh, just general negative sentiment there. 
Uh, yeah, I've no doubt. I think it's German ones tomorrow. I, I, they're going to show that um, th there is a slowdown. The drag of this energy crisis is going to really push on their um, their economy. Uh, I think the euro is is probably going to head to parity, especially as as the year goes on. If if, if it, once it gets colder, these gas prices are really going to start pushing more and more um, down on the economy. So. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a pretty grim picture, I think, especially out of Europe this weekend. And, and I think the Euro's probably got 102 as a ceiling. Um, and it's certainly, I'm more than likely going to be testing parity this week, I think, sometime.